Something we need to talk about while they... <laughs> the most infamous image ever taken of an Australian in wartime. But what happened to the body of the soldier featured in it has remained a mystery. Now, after more than seven decades, that mystery may well have been solved. I think by then that he knew what, he, what was going to happen to him and he knew that there was no way out for him and his other friends. It's October 1943. The prisoner of war is on his knees, blindfolded, his arms pinned, an executioner's sword poised above his head. 73 years later, Sergeant Leonard Sifleet's brother wonders just what went through his mind in those final moments. I think he'd be thinking about people and the family and things like that. What he went through for, for us to have a better life. Sergeant Sifleet was a radio operator with the Australian Army's Special Operations Unit when he was captured by Japanese soldiers in New Guinea. For weeks, he and two Ambonese colleagues were tortured, yet refused to reveal the whereabouts of their unit. They paid for that loyalty with their lives. I'm dead here. I get worse when I think of the Belkins, the torture. Sergeant Len Sifleet's family treasure his medals and have given other documents, including a letter of condolence from Buckingham Palace, to the Australian War Memorial. Boyd was only 12 when his brother was murdered. I remember him buying me first long pants and, you know, tall feet. Pretty handsome sort of a boat, I reckon. He was a pretty lovely person and that. Care for everyone, very caring person and that. But time moved on. Boyd had his own family and named his son Len after the brother he lost. And for seven long decades, he thought often about his big brother's final resting place, whether or not the enemy soldiers had buried him properly, a measure of respect, at least in death, that was denied to him in captivity. They started with the ambulance, dropping off the necks, and our Australian friend was the last. They all got ready to see. Pius Mayo's mother watched the executions as a six-year-old, she told him about it when he was a boy. This is when the execution took place and the story was planted on the cemetery. Travis McCoe lived beside Itapi Beach as a boy. Back then, he heard stories of the beheadings in what was virtually his backyard playground. As an adult, he set up a charity to help locals there. And that's what helped him track down those who could tell him where the bodies lay. This was a huge story 70 odd years ago. This was uh, massive all around the world. The story should be told. It's, it's a part of our Australian history that really needed to be kept alive. It's one of the rare occasions from World War II where a Japanese war atrocity was actually documented by photograph. A lot of people over the years have actually seen it, but uh, probably uh, not realised that there was not the, the uh, closing of the final chapter. That chapter may finally have been written. Last year, a plaque was laid in the village near where the executions took place. And now, the Australian Army's Unrecovered War Casualties Unit has officially opened an investigation to find Sergeant Sifleet's final resting place. If the family wants it, they'll excavate the site and bring home his remains. Either way, Boyd would like to visit to pay his respects. Oh, yeah, he'd be paid. Some people say, well, why not, you know, put it back in his hometown in Gundar? I think I'm more happy to just to live where it is. I think he'd be my hero. I'm sure he is. And uh, I like to see the people know him like that. I think like time doesn't heal all of uh, There are certain things. 70 years old, it still matters so much. Yeah. It's such important stories, and it's so important that we don't forget and that we are, we do remember. And you can just look at photos going through warm, you know memorials, you don't take in what that meant and what it meant to the family. Yeah, behind every photo there's, mm. there's a story like that. The amazing thing, the Australian Army's Uncovered War Casualties Department's going to open up a specific case file because of the work of mm. civilians. That's, that's a pretty extraordinary thing, like that, that people, just ordinary people could start something like that. Mm. Yeah. If you have just joined us, here's what's making news.